Up the ladder I did grope. That's no joke. That's no joke. Up the ladder I did grope. That's no joke. Up the ladder I did grope. And the hangman pulled the rope. At his near a word I spoke. Tumbling down, tumbling down. Well, here we are this morning, this beautiful sunny morning, on a mound at the top of Grisdew Road. Uh, what's so important about this area here? Well, this was the site of the city gallows. The county gallows was out at the junction almost of Waterford Regional Hospital. This was the site of the city gallows, and it was from the jail on Ballybricken that the criminals would be brought up here. Now, where it's a beautiful morning for us, for most people who came up here it was not it was the last day of their lives uh, we have reference to a man who was brought over here in 1751 he was from the Kila he was a master of the Kilotter and Charter School Kilotter and Charter School opened in 1744 and a couple of years later in 1751 he was brought up here and executed what was his crime his crime was a most heinous crime his name is John Penderville and he was the master of the Kilotter and Charter House he was found guilty of sexually abusing young children under the age of 12 in his care. He was brought here and executed. Now this mound was almost destroyed under the following circumstances. There were some beautiful houses here built by McInerney's. I got a phone call one day from somebody within Waterford City Council who told me that McInerney were going to bulldoze the site of the city gallows. I immediately went to the government, look, uh, the government body responsible for heritage and informed them. They said it wasn't on the sites and monuments map, but I was able to produce some maps that this site was actually nominated as the site of execution and thankfully it was preserved. So a lesson to be learned, it's not always on the maps that the government or local authorities have. Sometimes it's based on local tradition, sometimes it's based on obscure maps, but we should always be very mindful that what seems a little very irrelevant place or building could hide a wealth of history of our city. Site of the city gallows, Grays Jew. Well here we are out at the Arkeen roundabout and then what was out here? Well what was out here was the county gallows. So we spoke previously about the county jail which stood down at the waterside. It was known as John's Jail and that's where people from the county were, were incarcerated and they would be taken out here if found guilty of murder, whatever crimes that deserve a death. They would be brought out here and executed out here. And the gallows, I'm standing outside the permanent TSB bank here. It was in this area generally that the county gallows were. They would have been brought here in a cart or on a sled and the death they would have received would not have been very pleasant. First of all, the men would have been hung, drawn and quartered. And what does that mean? Well, the term is kind of backwards because hung, drawn and quartered are completely three different things. In actual fact, they were drawn first. What it means is they were brought here in a cart or on a sled. And that was the term that was used to be drawn out here. Then they were hung for maybe two minutes or even three minutes by a rope. No long drop. They'd be just swinging there for a couple of minutes They'd be taken down, they'd be probably unconscious at that stage, their head would be cut off, and their body would be divided into four quarters. Their stomachs would be cut open, and their entra entrails, their guts, would be taken out, thrown in their face, and then thrown what on the fire. What about women? What happened to women if they were found guilty of a serious crime? Well, they were burdened at a stake. And what did that entail? Well, there was a stake maybe 10 foot high, there would be a hole in the top of it, the woman would be chained to the stake and a hole put at the back of the stake, a rope around her neck, and they would pull the rope, strangle the woman. They would then light the fire underneath her. They'd have her fastened with chains around the stake and she'd be burdened to death. Sometimes it didn't go as planned. And what actually happened was the rope would burden and it would break. And the woman would cook there hanging and cook from the inside out like a chicken in an oven. Other times what they used in order to encourage the flames, they would paint her with tar. The last woman that I could find a record 
to be burdened here at the county ward of her gallows here was a Bridget Gein and she was mur burdened for murdering her husband. The other crime that a woman would be burdened at a stake for, not for witchcraft, it wasn't, that didn't, that was gone at that stage. It was for what was called coining. That was for making counterfeit money. Now, if you get a euro and you look at the little ledges, ridges on the edge of it, they're there traditionally because previous to that, when there was no little ridges on a coin, women would file it or they would clip little bits off of many coins, they would have a mould, they would melt them and make new money. So that was called clipping the coin from the act of just clipping little bits off. That deserved murder. A man would be hung, but in a woman's case, she would be burdened at the stake. 1762, there was a group of uh, people called the Levellers. Behind me here, you can see a wall. Well, in, in the old Irish system, there was no walls in any fields. It was common pasture. People would graze their, their animals. Then people began to build walls. And this uh, revolutionary group called the Levellers, or white boys, they were called the white boys simply because they wore a white shirt over their clothes. And they went around knocking the walls. That's why they were called the Levellers. They well leveled them. So there were six fellows captured in County Waterford. They were incarcerated in John's jail down at the waterside. They were brought out here in carts and they were hung out here. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, was in Waterford at the time and he says in his diary about the fellows being hung. Six of them were hung. But one of them, as he was climbing up the ladder, he screamed so much and so loudly that his screams could be held, heard in the city. Now, another way they were hung was a term that were turned off. There was no drop. So a ladder was put up against the gallows, the man would climb up, a rope put around his neck, and it could be only maybe a foot or two of a piece of rope. And they would just swing in the air there and choke to death, kicking their legs. And that was it. Turned off was the term that was used. The ladder was just twisted and they would fall, but they wouldn't fall very far. Small piece of rope around their necks. Horrific, horrific punishment. So that's our little trip out here to the county gallows. On to the next one. Behind me here was Ballybrick in jail. And why am I standing here in the mayor's walk? Well, this was the way the condemned man would be facing. The gallows for the condemned man would be built just outside of the Garda barracks here on the road. The man to be executed would be facing down here, looking down towards Mayor's Walk, where we're standing down here. That would be the last sight he would see. The last man to be publicly executed was in 1864. Thousands and thousands of people were all around Ballybricken and all around the Mayor's Walk here, looking at the spectacle. He was 64 years old. At that period of time, he would have been classed as an old man. At that time, the drop had been invented where he'd be standing on the platform and it just would drop. But they misjudged the length of the rope and the weight of his body. And when he fell, it almost pulled off his head. Screeches all around Ballybricken. That was the last public hanging. The next man to be hung was in 1900. He was hung inside the jail. Both of these men, the last man to be publicly hung, and the last man to be hung inside the jail were buried within the confines of the jail. So there you go, a little history of the executions on Ballybricken. On to the next site. The penitentiary was erected here on Hennessy's Road in 1820. One feature of the penitentiary was that it had a treadmill and the prisoners from the city and county jail on Ballybricken were brought down as were the young boys from the workhouse who were classed as bold in school. Now it was a very extreme punishment not only for men but even more extreme for young boys. It closed eventually in 1863 when a new jail was built on Ballybricken. This area in town is known locally as the Cross. It's called the cross because of an ancient cross which stood here and this is the place where officials would stand and make announcements of that to the local population. However, it was also a place where petty criminals were punished for their crimes 
and we find in the year 1693 that the, it was ordered by the corporation that the whipping post, ducking stool and pillory be provided at the county charge and not out of revenue. So these, were the, these were the implements that were used to punish criminals. We look at those in a little bit more detail. The next punishment was the ducking stool. Now this punishment was applied to what was called a scold or a troublesome and angry woman who by brawling and wrangling amongst her neighbours breaks the public peace and becomes a public nuisance. The woman after being complained to the authorities would be brought to the river. In the water of a case it could be very well be the water side. Put in a chair at the end of a long pole and ducked in the river in the hope that when she comes up out of the river she'll be after quieting down. So the, the following video is a, an indication of what it was like. The final punishment I'd like to speak about is called pressing to death. Now it was the most cruel and frightful punishment and it was reserved for people who refused to plead guilty or not guilty. They called it standing mute, that's quite literally saying nothing at all. And what they do is they'd get the person, lie him down on the ground, pin out his arms and his legs, place a large board on top of him and start piling weights on top of him until it eventually killed him. Now the last uh, evidence of that in England is in the 1730s. And uh, however, in Ireland, it was still being done 11 years later. And we have a report of a Waterford man, his name is Matthew Ryan. He was arrested for a crime in Kilkenny, but he was arrested in Waterford, brought to Kilkenny, and he was pressed to death over there. And what often happened was that uh, sometimes a person might be particularly strong and to take a lot lot of ways to kill him. So if his friends or family were there in the room, they would run over, jump up on the board and hopefully kill him much quicker so that they won't go to too much punishment. Hope you enjoy the trip around Waterford City Gallows. It's hard to believe that such things actually happen in our native city. The burning of women, the hanging, hung, drawn and quartered. It's all there and it happened here in Waterford City. Uh, back soon with another episode which will be of Waterford City Courthouses.